Hey, uh, can I just have you introduce yourself and that you uh, consent to being on camera? My name is Kayla Shucks and I consent on being on camera. My name is Taylor Gish and I can give my consent. Okay, um, what is the purpose of dating? Uh, I'd say to get to know someone. Okay. That and I feel like marriage is probably the end point. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, so let me first say, uh, you said to get to know somebody, right? Yeah. How is that different than friendship? Um, I think dating someone, you get to know them on a more intimate level, if you know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me let me ask you. Um, do you think you can do you think you can still call it dating without intimacy? Um, I think that's very specific from person to person. Like it's very individualized. Uh, well, would you want to be in a relationship without intimacy? I wouldn't want to. Do you think anyone would? I feel like it, there's different relationships. It just depends on that person, kind of what you establish your relationship. Like we're in a relationship, we're in a friendship, but this I don't is want. Not getting into yeah, it. this is not going to get into it. Are you in a relationship with each other? You mean? Or, no, or, oh, no. Oh, okay, but sorry. I'm saying there's relationships that you have with people every okay. day. Like I'm saying, I'm in a relationship, aka a friendship with her. Okay. But it just depends on the per, like the two people who are involved in that okay. relationship, depending if they want intimacy. Now you mentioned, uh, you know, the end goal, you know, probably should be marriage, right? Or, yeah. or in your opinion, do you believe that love has to last in order to be worthwhile? No, I don't believe it does. Um, I feel like there's many people on this earth that will come into your life and you'll fall in love with. Um, sometimes people do end up with someone forever, but I feel like at the same token, you can learn a lot of different things from being in love with different people. Okay, so when you meet somebody how do you decide if they're going to be a friend or more than a friend? And more importantly, when do you decide? Because it's often said a woman will know in the first five minutes of meeting a guy or five seconds of meeting a guy if he's going to be more than a friend. Do you think that's a myth? or? Um, I've heard people say that before, but personally I haven't had that. So uh, I can't knock it. What, what, what are your yeah, thoughts on that? I think that in today's society, like, people don't go straight into like relationships you quote unquote hang out for a little bit first and then you decide like you establish those ground rules and decide if you want to like establish that as like an official relationship or not so who establishes those ground rules in your opinion the people in the relationship so you think it's you think it's like both both people or yeah i think you have to come to like a mutual agreement okay so let me try this one do you think men and women can be just friends oh yeah definitely do you agree I do, because I have a lot of guy friends that I've been platonic with. Yeah, I do too. Okay. I think I have more guy friends than I do girlfriends. Okay, so, and actually, I'm curious about that. Do you think if a woman has more girlfriends or guy friends, do you think that says something about her at all? Or, um, I mean, personally, I think a lot of girls are catty, which is a reason I stay away from them. I think guys are easier to get along with, in my opinion, but... I feel like in our society nowadays, girls always have to compete with one another, and I feel like that just stems from that. So I feel like, personally as well, I feel like I have more guy friends just because there's no competition within a guy and a girl. So so uh, with your guy friends, right, if you asked your best straight single male friend if he would hook up with you or if he would date you, what do you think he would say? Oh, he would for sure say hook up. He would? Yeah. So then you can't be friends. No, you can be friends. We can be friends, but, but can, isn't it you, isn't it generally, aren't we establishing here that generally it's the woman who establishes the boundaries then? And not both of you, it's really up to the woman to decide if you're gonna be friends or more than friends? No, I think that's still like a mutual thing. It's but, kinda but like a just, friends with benefits kind of thing. Well, the thing is that most of the women that I ask say, of course we could be friends, just friends. But then when I ask them that question, if you'd ask your best straight single guy friend, most of the time they're like, of course, of course he'd hook up with me. So can we, conclude that it's typically the woman who says if we're going to be friends or more than friends. She has the power to decide the boundaries of the I relationship. I think the woman does carry like most, most of the power. Yeah, most right. of the power. But okay. I still think there is a sort of mutual aspect there. Okay, let me let me try this one. Um, just hypothetically, if you were on a job interview, would you prefer to be in the position of the person doing the hiring or the person who's the applicant submitting your resume? Like, so the person applying to be a part of the job, or like... Yeah, like, if you were on a job interview, right, would you rather be applying, or would you rather be the one hiring? The one in control. The one in control, right? Most yeah. people would say that, right? Yeah. Why do you think? Because you're the decider, right? Yeah, you have the power. Okay. Can you see the similarity between that situation and when a man approaches a woman 
like they typically do, you know, to ask her out in a date or a relationship. Because men hit on women, women don't really hit on men. Right, yes. women don't typically approach men, right? Yeah. So basically, a man approaches a woman typically, she's the decider. Isn't that an awfully privileged position to be in? It is, but I feel like that's kind of like society. Right. Yeah. The norms that we've grown up in. So... Also, my... well, I don't think... Part of it, I don't want to necessarily call it privilege because think about like when you go to New York, New York and you get catcalled. I want okay. to call that a privilege, yeah. and yet that's a man hitting on women. Well, right, but I'm saying that's kind of like the the, the, the toxic side of you know man, men hitting on women. But at the same time, let me ask you this question then, um, and I'm not denying that like you know catcalling and harassment happens. It, it certainly does. Would you personally be willing to give up the occasional catcalling or harassment? if it meant that you never ever got any attention whatsoever or special treatment I mean I want attention but I don't want to be catcalled but here's the thing it's isn't that isn't that kind of like saying I want to be a celebrity but I don't want to have to ever deal with any paparazzi I mean yeah that's one way like I feel so. like no matter what there's always going to be a double edged sword to any topic that you look at and I feel like that's one because yeah I feel like females yes we do want attention but the thing is, at the same token, we only want attention from certain people. Right, but I'm saying life life isn't really kind of like an a la carte situation. You kind right. of have to take the bad with the good, right? Yeah. Let me try this last one. Um, do you think beautiful women, do you think they're more privileged or more disadvantaged by their looks? Because it's definitely both, but do you think it's more one or the other? I think they're more privileged. They're more privileged. So why then do you think there's so much talk about male privilege or white privilege, but not so much talk about beauty privilege? I, I think there's a lot of talk about beauty privilege. It honestly depends who you listen to, though. Well, I mean, like, can you give me an example of any of the things you've heard about beauty privilege? That people who are good-looking will get farther in life. Um, like, even on even on interviews and stuff, yeah, if someone is well put together and aesthetically yeah. pleasing, then they're automatically, it's kind of like that first impression gonna th kind of right. thing, like, yeah. going to impress you more than someone who right. isn't as good looking. Right, and I've also heard similarly, like, height privilege is an issue too, because technically a lot of, uh, a lot of women tend to go for guys that are taller than them, and if a guy is short, he's kind of screwed in the dating market, because most women don't date guys shorter than them. Yeah. But I think it's interesting because there's a double standard there where I ask women, I say, why is it considered a woman's preference to reject a guy based on his height, but it's often considered shallow when a guy rejects a woman based on her weight? Is no, there, I've heard that before, they're yeah. Both, they're both shallow, right? Yeah. But I think it's interesting. And also, like, a lot of our leaders, politicians, you know, a lot of people are looked at in leadership roles because they're seen as tall and more commandeering. Yeah. So either way, I'm just saying that... that my theory, my opinion is I think everyone has their own unique privileges and disadvantages in life. Hopefully the positives outweigh the negatives, but unfortunately we can't just take all the good and you know leave all the bad. You kind of have to deal with both. Right. So either way, that was an interesting interview. Thank you guys for that. No problem. Yeah, take Thanks. care guys.